Hello friends, now let us see what happens to the food when it is passing through the esophagus. We said that when the food is passing through the esophagus, the esophagus carries it from the throat to the stomach. So, the food now enters into a J-shaped stomach. Our stomach is J-shaped. So, let us see what happens to the food in the stomach now. The stomach, my dear friends, is an elastic bag. It is an elastic bag located below the diaphragm. In an average adult, my dear friends, a stomach can hold 2 to 3 liters of food. So, we see here the food entering inside the stomach. The walls of the stomach are highly muscular and they churn the food thoroughly to mix the gastric juices secreted by the inner lining. So, there are certain juices since they are secreted in the gastric region of a person, we call them as gastric juices. So, the walls of a stomach are highly muscular and they churn the food thoroughly to mix the gastric juice secreted by the inner lining of the stomach. The opening of the stomach, my dear friends, to the intestine is called as the pylorus. Now, what is pylorus? The pylorus word, my dear friends, comes from the word pylon, which means gate. And pylorus means a gatekeeper. So, pylorus is a gatekeeper between the stomach and the small intestine. So, here we see the pylorus, which opens, lets the food in and also lets the food out. The gastric juice is secreted by the inner lining of the stomach. So, these are the gastric juices which are secreted by the inner lining of the stomach. Gastric juices are colorless and they are highly acidic liquid containing water, some salts, hydrochloric acid and an enzyme called as pepsin. So, inside the gastric juices, what are we having? We are having water, salts, hydrochloric acid and an enzyme called as pepsin. Now, my dear friends, water, salts, enzyme called as pepsin are all fine. But why hydrochloric acid? What does hydrochloric acid function in the stomach? The acid, friends, serves two functions. There are two functions of the hydrochloric acid. The first among which is that it kills any germs which may have entered along with the food. Acid, we know, has got germ killing properties. So, this hydrochloric acid kills any germs which may have entered along with the food. And the second is that hydrochloric acid activates the enzyme pepsin to act on proteins. So, pepsin is an enzyme which acts on what? It acts on proteins and it does breaks down the proteins. So, pepsin breaks down the proteins and hydrochloric acid is the acid which acts activates the enzyme pepsin. Now, friends, there is a mucus in the stomach which protects the inner lining of the stomach from the action of the hydrochloric acid. Since hydrochloric acid can harm the inner lining of the stomach, there is mucus which protects it from the acid. Now, the food, my dear friends, stays inside the stomach for about 3 hours and it attains a pulp-like form called as the chyme. So, here we see the food getting churned, churned, churned and getting transformed into pulp-like form called as the chyme. Now, the pylorus, my dear friends, intermittently allows the chyme to move to the intestines little by little. As we said, pylorus is the gatekeeper between the stomach and the small intestine. It intermittently opens to allow the chyme to move to the intestines little by little. The exit of the food from the stomach is regulated by a muscle. Regulated means controlled. So, the exit of the food from the stomach is controlled by a muscle called as the sphincter muscle. So, the sphincter muscle is a muscle which controls the exit of the food from the stomach. So, this was it about stomach, my dear friends. Now, let us see what happens to the food when it leaves the stomach. As we said, it moves to the small intestine. So, we shall be discussing what happens in the small intestine in the forthcoming modules. Thank you.